Joe, what's up, guys? Matt Wick here. We are back in NHL 25 with our 2025 draft class roster. Now let's take a look at this, uh, the lines that we have here. We are in year three, four. Year four of the sim, technically. Year two with our team, or year three with our team here. Uh, we did make the playoffs last season, so we are on the rise. Hopefully, this team can continue to make the jump. And I think we have a pretty solid chance. Uh, we do have one deficiency in terms of our roster, but I'll show you guys that here in a second. So, Anton Frendel, 90 overall. He's going to be our big point getter, hopefully. Uh, has all those superstar abilities and X-Factor as well. Michael Misa up there. Oleg Malikov, uh, Porter Mertone, and Cole Reshny with Landon Staples in the top six. I think it's a very, very solid top six there. Our bottom six, solid enough. You know, they're all young. They're all going to get better. We are going to do the 5v5 focus this year just because, like I said, of our one deficiency and to kind of get these guys up in the bottom six a little bit higher. I'll show you their overalls and their stats. So you see decent stats. They all have good shot power. You need that shot accuracy to come up, but we've been working on that over the off seasons. I think everybody's pretty solid. Silverguard has a fantastic awarenesses, so his are going to go up even higher, which will be interesting to see. Maybe we'll find a spot for him. Uh, Caleb Desnoy, Des, oh man, this name's going to really fuck me. I'm not even going to try to say it. Someone in the comments, leave it down below uh, if you're inclined, so inclined to. Uh, <laughs> days, days, day, I know it's French. All right, I'm not even going to try. I'm done. <laughs> it's going to take me a long time, um, but he looks pretty good. Caleb Matthews, a very easy name to say there. He's one of the new faces on the team this year. Two-way forward, got some good puck skills, solid shot. Uh, skating needs some work, and same with the physical. But uh, like I said, the awareness is the defensive and offense awareness is nice, but the defense awareness needs some work if he's going to be a bottom six guy for us. Same thing with Roger McQueen. He's got some solid all-around stats, but we'd like to get those awarenesses a bit higher. Uh, same with Justin Carboneau. He has 86 offensive awareness, but the 79 defensive awareness. He's a playmaker, but still I'd like to see that get a little bit higher there. Our biggest strength for this team, though, is going to be our goaltending, Gabriel Daig, which, shout out to a commenter, uh, <laughs> showed me how to correctly pronounce the name. He looks phenomenal. 99 glove low, 98 glove high, so you're not beating him glove side. Sticks, uh, stick side, you're not beating him there either. Uh, he looks pretty solid. He's got good rebound control and recovery. 94 speed, 89 vision. So he is going to be a stud for us. And then Ivan Kovic uh, as well here is not a bad backup at all. He looks very solid too. Only 20 years of age. Pretty much all of these guys are 20 years of age. So uh, I think I think we'll be good. I think especially once we do the 5v5 this year, I think it's going to be a big jump for a lot of these guys. And we'll see uh, how, how much it affects our overalls. Now, this is why I'm doing the 5v5 focus. Our defense is still a little bit lackluster. Uh, Matthew Schaefer, 84 solid. Noonan, 80 overall, which isn't terrible. He's an offensive defenseman, so he's got some good stats all around there. Uh, but then other than that, especially our bottom pairing there really leaves a lot to be desired. Teague Vader, this is his first year in the league. Uh, and then uh, Colby Gapter, who also, Colby Gapter, um, this guy's a little bit of a dickhead. He's one of those guys that gives that sure whatever response. I haven't seen it from a prospect yet. He is the first one, but Colby Gapter, I'm watching you, buddy. You better you better watch yourself because if you want to be a cancer, I'll kick you out of this locker room fast as shit. You've seen what I did in the test in the draft one. I ain't down with any of that stuff, so make sure you keep those emotions in check there, buddy. But uh, like I said, the awareness is, offensive awareness for him actually is a pretty pretty good for being a defensive defenseman. Um, Rajkovic's not, not bad either, so it's maybe throwing a little bit in my face there. Jasper Coat. To Kota Jarvi, <laughs> 80s, so we'd like to see that go up. And then honestly, too, Teague Vader, not too bad, so maybe I need to rethink that. His skating is terrible, though. Um, but I think I might still do it regardless, just to give us that overall bump for this year. Uh, we're still young. We still got a lot of time to go. I did lock a couple of these guys up to extensions already, so that way we don't have to sign our uh, three $19 million players. Uh, every single season so hopefully we can stop doing that and they can stop putting those guys in the lineup for us but it should be a successful year one let's get into it and see how the team finishes and if we make the playoffs all right, and just before we get into the first season sim, I wanted to show you guys how big of an effect the 5v5 focus can have on your team. Look at the roster now. Frendel up to a 92, Misa at 89, Olog Malikov up to an 88, Martone up to an 88. Uh, just big, big boosts across the whole roster. Carboneau up to an 80, Roger McQueen up to an 81, but the biggest effect it had was our defense. Much more respectable looking now. 86, 82 for that top line. 80, 82, Gapter got a nice increase, even though he's a pain in the ass. Uh, and then our bottom pairing with uh, Coach Kajarvi and Vader. Look at Vader's uh, awarenesses now. He's just nasty. He just needs to work on that skating. He's a bit of a pylon out there, but I think we'll be fine. Um, but like I said, let's get into the sim, see how we do. 
Let's go, boys. For the second straight year in a row, we have made the playoffs after a, uh, it was a little bit of a tumultuous ending to the season. We started struggling a little bit there, but thankfully, there was a massive divide between the two playoff teams pretty much all year in the Western Conference. I mean, you see there, we finished 13 points up on the Sharks, who were the next closest team. I mean, we'll see what that uh, comes down to. They got one more game to play, um, but it, it was it was testy there for a little while. But thankfully, because of the weaker divisions that we are in, it came into our benefit. Now, one of the things that surprised me was our lack of scoring, really. Uh, Landon Staples led the team with 71 points, which, like I said, was a bit surprising. Malakov there. Don't understand why he takes so many fucking penalties. I mean, 155 penalty minutes. He's a two-way forward. He's got 88 discipline, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe just somebody needs to be out there defending these young guys, and he takes it upon himself to be that role filler. Um, but like I said, it is just interesting to see that he takes so many penalties being a two-way forward but you know it is what it is Landon Staples 12 uh, game winning goals as well so that is huge heading into the playoffs 37 goals 34 assists for him um, now one thing that was a little bit disappointing was our bottom pair defenseman they ended up becoming our bottom pair defenseman Colby Gapter and Rada Bojevic <laughs> It takes a second, but I get it there. Uh, now, no penalty minutes for him, but uh, minus 32 as a, what was he, 80? 80, 80 overall, yeah, with solid enough stats. Like, buddy, come on. What are we doing here, man? Um, you see a lot of minuses on the team. Uh, I mean, I guess that's just coming from being a young team, so not going to look too, too much into it. I mean, these are pretty much the guys that we have. We don't really have a lot of guys that we can fill in at the moment, but it is a little disappointing to see guys like Frendel and Misa with subpar seasons, especially after a good season they had before. Now, one guy that did surprise me was Malcolm Spence, 44 points, 20 goals, 24 assists. He was playing a lot of fourth line minutes. I bumped him up to the second line just because he was playing really well. Only a minus three, so I'm not going to be too upset about that. I mean, he finished above some other guys that, uh, you know, we expected more from. Um, but seeing that is a, uh, it, it's 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 nice. It's nice. You know, we got guys that are contributing that really we didn't expect to. So let's get into it. Let's see who we're going to face in our first round playoff matchup and see if we can get our first playoff series win. All right, and our first round opponent is the Vancouver Cacucks. We uh, we have a tough tough road here, boys. I mean, we come in as the last place team in the West, and we have to you know go through the 53 win Vancouver Canucks. It's not going to be easy, but I will say the one thing that does give us somewhat of an edge is our goaltending with Dag in net. I think that lets us uh, have the ability to win any series. But let's go two games in. Can we steal one of these in Vancouver? Come on, boys, first game. 4-2 win, let's go. That's a good start, boys. Keep it going. Not used to doing it this way. It takes a little bit longer, but... Uh, or no, I mean, it's definitely shorter, but it just seems like it goes a little bit longer with the uh, skipping through, and there's not as much action going on. So, series is tied 1-1. One one. We're heading back to Utah. Can we rip off the home ice advantage? 5-1 win there for the boys. Let's go. That's a good start. So, we have another series lead here. Next game, game four. Can we take a 3-1 series lead? We can. 3-1 series lead. Let's hop in to this one and see if we can get our first playoff series win um ba -ba -ba -ba. there we go we'll sip the skip the first period all right shots are even first period zero zero second period boys come on two one let's go this could be huge this could be huge can we get our first playoff series win then anything is possible after this one the boys get a little fire lit under them and then we could go on a big run big penalty kill there by the boys the young kids are coming they're hungry they're thirsty no jt miller you pittsburgh son of a bitch how could you do this to me dag come on hold strong one more minute then get this to overtime all right let's go boys ot game what game five elimination game let's go boys come on early penalty kill the boys got it done though come on what do you got Somebody be the hero. Staples, where you at? Get on the ice. Malakov, anybody. Dag himself, maybe shoot one into the net. <laughs> Getting into the waning minutes here of overtime. We're going to go to a second overtime here in game five. Shots are crazy right now from both teams. They kill off a power play. We might still have it here in the second OT. Let's see. Can we get a quick one here in the second overtime? Everybody's got tired legs, but we're young. And Matthew Schaefer gets it on the power play to kick us in to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's go, boys. Let's sim up and see who our opponent's going to be. The Vegas Golden Knights stand in our way in round two. Let's see. They got home ice advantage. So let's see, boys. Can we steal one on the road? Come on. 
One game is all I ask for. 10 to 1. Jesus Christ. There we go. We come back strong. 4 1 win. So we get what we needed to do. We get the split. Let's see. Back at home in Utah. The fans are pumped up. Half of them can't see the ice, but it doesn't matter. Big win there. Can we take a 3 1? We can. Three straight games after getting pumped. 10 to 1. 7 and 2 in the playoffs right now. Let's hop in, see if we can get another series win and get ourselves a ticket punched to the Western Conference Finals first period. Solid start, 2-2, two, two. Vader and Frondell get one, Roy Barbashev second period, shots are crazy, 5-3, to three. ooh, it's looking like game one all over again, let's go, uh, I'll just do the quick sim here because it's not looking too good, so can we get the comeback? Oh, it was close, we were so close there, but we weren't able to get it, scored a goal with a lot of time left, but just not able to close out the game, 6-5 to five there, let's get up to the next one and see if we can put this series away, really don't want to go to a game 7, especially after we had all this hype that we uh, were rolling in here with, alright, so let's go boys, sim game. Get this done quick because we got a lot of video left to go. So let's go. First period, game six, up 3-2 in Vegas. What do you say, boys? Solid start to the first period. Silva guard, Frondell with two. Can we hold on? Okay, Vegas is chipping away. Let's go, boys. Start the sim minute by minute. Here we go. Three to one lead. Can we hold on? We don't have a lot of playoff experience, but we have faith. We got faith in ourselves, that youthfulness. Someone play the commercial right now of Gen Z. Malakov gets a power play goal to put it even more away. Western Conference Finals, question mark. Roy gets one back there quick, but can we hold on? Three minutes left. It's looking likely. Let's go, boys. Western Conference Finals. Here we come. Let's sim up and see who we got in that round. The Winnipeg Jets are the only thing standing in our way between us and a Stanley Cup final. So our first Western Conference Finals here with the Young Guns roster. I got to say they are setting the bar high for the other draft classes that we are going to do. But let's get into it. Two games here in Winnipeg. Let's see if we can do our normal and take one, seven, four, five, two, though. Sims moving fast because there's not a lot of teams left to play. Boys. This would be huge. Two games at home, take them both. What do you say? Sim through. OT loss. Ooh, we're down three to one. Uh-oh. All right, let's go. Let's hop in here real quick and see. I, I was debating whether uh, we're going to do the uh, sim by period, but this is, uh, this is a big moment. Western Conference Finals, first trip here. First period, boys. Come on, fight. And looks like the dream's dead. <laughs> it's not looking too good. Second period. 5-1. Yeah, let's just let's just get out of here. 6 to 1. Uh Day gets pulled. We get eliminated in the Western Conference Finals. Disappointing, but Western Conference Finals, I mean in year what? Year 3 with this roster on the uh, on the squad. We're only going up from here. Everybody's young, 20, 21 years old. Uh so we got a lot of faith. I think this is going to be a perennial playoff team as long as we can keep the group together. I mean, contracts already might get a little bit crazy, but we'll see about that down the road. But let's get into the next season, boys, and see how developed these guys get. All right, guys, new year, new me, let's go. How fitting is it to our first preseason game is against the Winnipeg Jets, who ended up winning the Stanley Cup after we were eliminated them by them in the Western Conference Finals. And take a look at the squad. The boys are coming along nicely. A little disappointing Frundell isn't higher right now than a 91. Landon Staples, though, up to an 88. Martone, 87. He's actually already on the first line. That's what the computer put over Malakov, which I kind of agree with because Malakov takes penalty after penalty after penalty. He has to get to his 155 penalty minutes, even though he did have 69 points last season. Nice. We're going to start him on the second line, see how he does with Michael Misa and Cole Reshny, who have uh, some, some nice abilities there on them. Uh, Malcolm Spence, Roger McQueen, who is a big surprise, 84 overall. Dejonay, De Dejonay, no oh, fuck, I still can't, guys. <laughs> Sorry about it. Uh, Caleb Matthews, 81. Silvergard, 82 overall. He's a nice sniper to have down there on that fourth line. And if you see those awarenesses, he is nice with it. Uh, I think we focused on him, his skating, which he actually got up a little bit either. That or his face-offs. So I've been trying to move it around a little bit since we did that 5v5 focus last year. So I'm not trying to spam that up too, too much. But it's going to be interesting to see what we do this year. Our defense as well looking a lot better. Matthew Schaefer up to an 86. Noonan up to an 82. Same with Gapter and Rad Radovocevic. <laughs> Uh, Teague Vader, one of our nice surprises there. Uh, he was projected to be a later round pick guy, but I grabbed him up. 
88 offense awareness, 91 defense awareness. One thing I think we might focus on is maybe if there's one for our shooting, we'll go for that one or possibly even just go for the goaltending one again because we have these guys locked up for a couple of years, Gabriel Daig and Jack Ivan Ivankovic. Uh, <laughs> if we could have some nasty, nasty, nasty goaltending, uh, that would be pretty cool. I mean, Daig is already pretty uh, pretty well established in the league as well as Ivan Kovic. Um, so I think if we can get maybe Daig up to like a 93, 94 and Ivan Kovic up to a 90, that'd be an unreal tandem. Uh, and we'd be able to uh, wreck some havoc there. Now also too, just to show you guys this as well. So we have the 29th pick. I ended up taking this guy, Corbin I'm going to say Peener. I know it's Penner, but I like to say uh, like to say it's Peener because we grabbed a couple other guys uh, that have some good names. So we have Cash Cock down here who is looking to try to develop. We also have Gregory McMuffin who's up to a 77 overall, which is very cool to see. Jordan Gavin is another guy from that 2025 class that we uh, have high hopes for. He's normally a guy I see put up a lot of points after a little while. Same thing here with this. Uh, I believe this is a creative player, Ruslan Karamanov. Uh, Karamov added a couple lobs in there uh, but he's been putting up some points in the AHL so we'll see there as well with Roman Slager was another guy uh, that I liked a lot coming out of that draft great puck skills for a playmaker awarenesses need some work but maybe when we call him up we'll do the 5v5 focus again but we do have some guys that we got from that 2025 class who could fill in also one big thing I did Pekka Votelainen uh, was not one of our picks but he was with the Ottawa Senators uh, Tiz Aginla was coming up on the end of his contract or was it someone else i think it was someone else that i grabbed um and i ended up trading him for this guy i mean 2025 picks it doesn't have to be by us so i was looking around the rest of the league saw some guys that i didn't grab uh, and this guy looked like the best and we need defensemen to a point so grabbed him up for the AHL hopefully he can help develop do have some of these guys that I drafted from other leagues or other draft classes like Joe Aginla and Painter here uh, just to kind of help the development of some of our other guys hopefully put up some nice points and our two goaltenders Brian Giordano and Joshua Ravensbergen are also 2025 picks so if one of we lose one of our top guys just because of cap constraints hopefully one of these guys can come up and fill that role but let's Let's get up to the coaching training and see what we want to focus on. All right, and our head coach, Nolan Aubrey, says that this team could make the Stanley Cup final. So, yes, we'll go ahead and agree with that. I think that we can. We made it to the Western Conference Finals last year, and I think, as, as obviously, we've only gotten better. Um, now, let's take a look. Do any of these give us a big increase to a shooting? Power play kind of does, but the decrease to defensive awareness... I mean, it just sucks that it has to be that. Uh, offensive awareness there. We get offensive and defensive awareness with the video sessions, but we don't want to lose power. Although that might honestly not be the worst uh, thing there, just to lose the power, because a lot of our rookies have good shot power. They just have bad accuracy. Um, so maybe if it slows down a little bit, that would be better. But looking at all of them, I think... Let's put all our eggs in the goaltending basket and hope that that can carry us there. So let's go goaltending. I mean, I know Dag already has like 99s, but let's. Jeez, ah, now I don't even want to do that. Maybe we do the team bonding. Jeez, these. I mean, these ones were so limited. I mean, 5v5 focus obviously always just looks like the best one. You know what? Fuck it. We're going to do it again. 5v5 focus. Let's go. <laughs> so let's get up to the start of the season and see what the roster looks like after doing that. So after another year of 5v5 focus, our bottom six is rounding out very nicely. These guys' overalls are uh, being benefited greatly from doing that. And I mean, I think, like like I said, that that's just the best thing to go for right now. Just because our goaltending is set, I don't want to get decreases to the awareness. Maybe next year that's something we can look at. Um, but I mean, like same, just having such a young roster, it's probably just the best because in the offseason and for the in-season goals obviously we're not focusing a lot on the awarenesses we're focusing on other regions so for this point we'll do it for uh do it for the boys look at the defense oh we that's a stanley cup winning defense if i've ever seen one right there you'd like to see schaefer maybe up to a 90 overall by this point he is medium elite uh the only medium elite we do have on the roster for our defense goaltending stayed the same oh 92 for dig never mind ivan kovic as well up to an 88 so that is good to see let's get into the season boys let's see if we can make the playoffs once again i definitely think it is a playoff roster i'll make some line changes throughout the season if necessary and check up on the stats but let's see can we make the playoffs for a third straight year and hopefully make the stanley cup finals all right so a bit of a stressful season here uh in 2029 
we were fighting for our lives pretty much the entire <laughs> entire season. I know it looks like we had a little bit of a lead there on the Jets, who were the Stanley Cup champions last year, but we were not in a playoff spot up until maybe like the trade deadline that we finally squeezed our way in there and separated just a little bit away from the rest of the central there so let's go ahead and take a look at our top point getters uh, again nobody really putting up crazy numbers like we're seeing in our testing the draft series with Callie Palson so it'd be nice to have a guy like that but we are getting a lot of depth scoring I mean look at all the guys with almost 20 goals Schaefer uh, nice season from him 50 points plus 23 so we're starting to see those pluses come up a little bit Frendel up there with a plus 28 he's 21 years of age don't forget we didn't see the big breakout season especially from Paulson until he hit 22 23 so hopefully some of these guys can start stepping it up Oleg Malikov this is one of the biggest surprises 67 points which isn't bad plus 16 168 penalty minutes which led the league <laughs> so he is a uh, a bit of a scrapper let's actually go over and see how many fights did he have? He had 171 hits, which isn't uh, isn't like a crazy amount. 21 fights! This dude is the only one standing up for the rest of the boys. So just like I thought, uh, <laughs> he is the one who's taking it on himself to stand up for the young boys. Oleg Malikov, I mean, you don't get, I guess, the uh, the appreciation you deserve. What, 168 penalty minutes. The next guy is Porter Mertone with 68. Landon Staples actually up there with 44, so that's a bit surprising to see. Uh, just taking a lot of penalties, I guess, on his end. Let's see those plus minuses. Frendel Noonan up there with 25. Schaefer plus 23. Regni 20. Martone. Let's see the assist guys on the team. Frendel, Regni, Misa. Um, I mean, Misa, I mean, he's just not scoring goals. and He's not getting the assists that I would want just because the rest of the team, like the line mates that he has, just aren't putting up a ton of goals. But, I mean, we are getting a lot of depth. I mean, you look down here at Silvergard, who's on the third line. Even McQueen, who's on the fourth line. Minus 15 which is disappointing i think he's at 85 84 overall now um i mean 38 i mean that's, that's not bad for where he's playing neither is silver guard to get 20 goals but we just aren't seeing that big breakout player that we need right now and that's kind of one of the the downfalls of this draft class is that we didn't get that number one like medium franchise or something guy that we could just grow immediately but the team is looking solid let's see who we have in our first playoff matchup and see if we can finally get our very first stanley cup all right, the first round matchup is set, and it is the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> Blackhawks led by Connor Bedard. He only had 89 points this season, so we will see. Their goaltender I did not recognize either, so hopefully he's a low overall and we can just pump him, fill him full of holes. Two games in Chicago before we go to Utah. Let's see, can we go out with a stealing of home ice advantage? First game, come on, simulation. Three to one win. Malcolm Spence talking to me. Ooh, I asked him to play uh, right wing. Let's see, I just don't feel comfortable. What the fuck? All right, buddy, whatever. You can't play left wing, you can't play right wing. I guess you don't want to be a be a hero or a champion in this organization. I did ask one other player, Caleb, uh, last name I can't say. Folks, I learned it. It's because I only gave them one month. I should have given them two months. I just clicked through the screens too fast trying to get through those conversations. So that's something we'll have to address maybe in the off season. But we got off to a good start here against the Chicago Blackhawks. Big win in game one. Can we take a 2-0 two, two series lead? Let's go. Can we close it out in four? Two games at home in Utah. Ooh, six to four. One more game, boys. Come on, get the sweep. This would be the first sweep for our series. And no, we cannot. Okay, so let's go one more game, and then we'll get into the period-by-period period sims if we need be. In Chicago, can we take it from them? Do not let the reverse sweep. We win. Close them out. 5 nothing victory. Let's go, boys. Let's go on to the second round. Ooh, the Dallas Stars, if you remember from the first episode, the team that eliminated us from the playoffs in our very first year making the playoffs. But now we've got some understanding of what we need to get done. We got some playoff success already. Big win just against the Chicago Blackhawks. Even though we're just squeaking into the playoffs these past two years, we are still finding playoff success. So let's see if we can find it here. Two games in Dallas, boys. What do you say? Come on. Simulation should be a little bit faster. 4-1 win. Love to see that. 4 nothing win. Let's go, boys. Can we get a sweep here again? We're back home in Utah. The fans would love to see it. 4-1. 2-0. Let's go. Our very first sweep, and we are storming our way through these playoffs. Let's see who we get next. Looks like it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks, but we've already ousted them last year. Let's go, boys. Back to back. 
Western Conference Finals. Vancouver had a little bit of a scare. They were up 3-1 on Edmonton. Edmonton took them to Game 7, but Vancouver was able to close it out. Let's see, will that come back to haunt them? Those tired legs, two games in Vancouver. We've been good on the road so far to start these series. Can we keep it up? Come on, boys. OT lost. OT lost. No! These could have gone either way, and they did not go our way, so that fucking sucks. Come on, guys. All right, two more games at home. we got to take both of these games. They're close in the series. Come on, no. Down 3-1. Come on, boys. Don't do it to us. We've gotten this far. Down 3-1. Vancouver got a scare last time. Let's see if we can scare them again and finish it off. Pull their pants down, boys. Big game here. Eliminated. In the Western Conference Finals. In, I think, game five twice now. God damn it. So we're getting close. We still have a young team. The future is bright here in Utah. We're getting there every single year. I'd like to see a little bit more regular season success, but this is going to be the prime time for these guys because they are getting towards their prime at age 22, 23. We will see if they're able to get it done in the next episode. We'll get two more seasons in there, and then we'll see. Can we win our Stanley Cup Finals? Guys, if you're enjoying this series so far, make sure to leave a like down below. Leave your thoughts in the comments as well, and subscribe to the channel for more NHL 25 and gaming content. That's the end of this one. Have a great day. Peace. <laughs>